Welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We come up on our, our big 450 episodes. You know, so I guess if we're like Pokemon, we're now at our Diamond and Pearl age. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's one of those things like, remember when we reached 100, like, oh my god, 100, wow. And then as they go on, it comes more like, oh yeah, one of these, cool. <laughs> and then you get the point you're like, death? What do y'all know about death? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, and part of it was we, we've kind of covered this movie in more ways than one in the past, but we figured a lot of podcasts don't seem to talk about it that much. I mean, you know, it is kind of a cult movie by this point. And on top of that, though, we never really did just a standard retrospect on it. We did a re- audio commentary. We covered one of the old scripts that never got made on the movie with the earlier drafts. And then we had the guys from the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, archive. On. Yeah, we had Ryan Haas and Steve Applebaum on here. And um, did we? Have, for some reason, I thought there was another one we had. But maybe, I know we talked about Mario Brothers, the movie, like in many of episodes. It's just a, a common theme, as common as Bruce Springsteen, Clint Eastwood, and Sonic the Hedgehog. And Batman. And Batman, yeah, yeah, you know that other one that's probably bigger than all of those ones. <laughs> we, uh, no, we do, we do talk about we, we. It's come up a lot just in casual conversation on the show, but I mean, I know we talk about it a couple of times by this point, but I mean, a lot of those episodes by this point were like two hundred episodes ago. So why not pull it off the shelf and dust it off? Well, exactly. And I was like, you know what? We never did. It was just a straight up retrospect, and you know. I think of Mario Brothers being, like, literally in my top ten favorite movies of all time. It's one of those ones that I can throw on at any moment, and it takes me back to the happy old 90s of renting that movie at the video scene and Twain Hart. Let's get real specific right now, you know. But that's, like, what that movie kind of represents. And the odd thing is, whenever I think about this one, you know, like, me and you could talk about this movie, go, dude, it's like the greatest movie fucking ever, and so on. And everybody I knew growing up thought the exact same thing, too. It wasn't till like, I you know, came to the future and, like, met other people or saw other people there, and I guess not really met them, that was like, oh, people don't really like this movie? Like, that that always threw me off because I was like, everybody I knew in school fucking thought this movie was, like, the greatest thing ever. Like, I was like, I never heard of someone who didn't like this film. When I first saw it, I loved it because I, I, I saw it right as I was getting into Mario Brothers, right? And, you know, Mario wasn't a brand new thing by that point because technically he's been around since like 1981 or 82 with donkey kong and the first game came out in 85 so he wasn't brand new but i guess as far as like public eye goes this is when he was kind of on the, uh, like on the upswing so me going to see this movie for the first time like oh my god a mario movie's coming back Cause you, you you wouldn't really you know this goes without saying by this point like i feel like a lot of people in our generation say this and talking to podcasters like let me tell you kids you didn't have the internet but it was one of those things where you didn't know what was coming out you would see something on the tv you're like holy fuck there's a mario brothers movie coming out and then you'd go to the theater that weekend you know hopefully if you can get a ride if your parents would take you yeah. so or if you had one you gotta go over to like your friends us be like hey uh jimmy's dad um yeah, what are you doing on Friday night? Hopefully uh, they weren't Ryan, those. Ryan, you're su- six years old. What are you doing? What do you What do you want? <laughs> well, hands behind behind the back, just kick a rock, you know. No, no, just um, kick a rock. Just goes right through his fucking window. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna try the next house over. <laughs> no, um, well, that was also one of those things of like. If you did try a friend's house, you'd have to hope they weren't one of those super, super, like, Christian friends who were just like, Billy can't watch any movies over G, you know? And this movie has evolution in it, so we are not taking it to see that. (laughs) We don't like that Darwin shit this movie throws at you. (laughs) Literally, that's like the main theme of the movie is evolution and de-evolution. I feel, I feel like this is when they in like a Catholic school when they start talking about evolution, they just put this movie on. Yeah, they're just be like, not only do they say we fucking evolved from monkeys, they say we evolved from dinosaurs too. What kind of blasphemy is that this? shit? <laughs> <laughs> so going to see this movie, I remember like loving it as a kid. And then I got a little older, and then I got a little bit more of, like, kind of, I guess, I I was around a lot of people who hated the movie. And I was one of the only people that saw the movie. And other people ended up seeing the movie. Like, 
oh, dude, that movie sucked. Like, what? And, you know, it kind of came to peer pressure. And kind of like this back and forth, back and forth of love it, hate it, love it, hate it. And I think my big thing, like, I just, you know, at some point, though, I just kind of watched it just as it was. And it's still not a perfect movie, but it was one of these things. Like, you know, I can't deny it's fun to watch. It's always moving. You could look and dig deep for the Mario stuff in there, and if you it does, you don't have to dig as deep as you think you have to to find it. But on top of that, it was also you know I just can't take away the feeling I was being a kid watching that movie. And when I put put all this overly judgmental cynicism aside, it's like hey, it's a fun movie. Exactly. That's the whole thing. Is the movie's just so much fun at the end of the day, the whole way through. Every time I throw this one on. You can't help but, like, I literally just get sucked into this movie. It's one of those ones where, like, you forget what the fucking time is. You just keep watching it. You take it. You go along for the whole ride and everything like that. And it's just so, like, amazing and awesome and so on. So that's what always kind of throws me off when people just, like, don't dig it. Like, I mean, like, yeah, I guess if you're, like, look, I don't even know. Like, if you're looking for, like, a straight-up Mario movie, I'm assuming you're looking for more of a cartoon. Like, there's the Mario Brothers uh, Super Mario Super Show and Super Mario Brothers 3 and World and so on. I guess that's, like... If you want more closer representation and so on, but just straight up fun, like 90s, like it gives you like, I don't know, when I watch this movie, I think of like if you had a perfect multiplex to play a bunch of movies at, you'd show this one and you'd show Ninja Turtles and you'd show like Mortal Kombat, like all these movies that I feel that really represent like that early 90s era kids, like not kids movies in the sense like, oh, it's a kids movie, but I mean like growing up, those are those big movies that like, you're almost like, yeah, this movie's fucking amazing. Like, you know, like, almost like you should. Don't be like, you just don't get it, man. Get throw major pain on that list, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's another good one. No, um, this one right here, I feel like, looking at it now, I do see some of the flaws, but I don't even, like, look at it like, oh, my God, it's so flawed. It's amazing. Uh, like, there are some legitimately interesting things in there, and I think it's just this weird, like, I put this this weird combination because you had people like trying to make one movie over here. You had other people trying to make this other movie over there. And then, but they're trying to go behind their back and make this movie. There's this weird, like double cross. I almost think like, like how this movie got made that in itself would be an interesting movie in itself. You know? Yeah. Well, this, it seems like one of those movies where like you make one of those like weird bio, I guess, is biopic the right word for it? It's like a biopic. Biopic, yeah. You know, where it's just like, instead it's like the making of the Mario Brothers movie, but almost maybe like, um, shit, what's that movie? Like, give it like that sort of tone, like, uh, what's that fucking Ben Affleck movie where Superman dies and, um... Oh, Hollywood Land. Hollywood Land. No, it's, it's like, what the fuck movie is that? I'm like, it's not, believe me, it's not, Ben Affleck's not Batman, if that's the Superman movie you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, but that one, like, give it like that kind of tone. Vibe. Just call it Mushroom Kingdom and just like have like it's like a shot of like Bob Hoskins like it's an all black room and then there's like a door with light so you kind of see him somewhat silhouetted. He has his hat off. He has a cast on and the broken in the cast he has like <laughs> He's a bottle sitting on like a fold out chair, <laughs> like, like a, a bottle of booze, like looking down. <laughs> the cost of whimsy is high. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> oh, but like, you know what I mean? There's like, because there is so much weird stuff going on. I think this is the thing, what it is. Like, when you kind of think about it, here's literally like everybody's fucking parents fighting over how to make a fucking Mario Bros. movie. It sounds so fucking weird, but just imagine if you got like, in your entire school chum of friends, if everybody's fucking parents got together and said, we're going to make a fucking Mar Mario Brothers movie. That's practically what it is at the end of the day, because you really have not a single person, and there's like, Hey, yo, you know what? I've been growing up my entire life playing fucking video games. <laughs> I all totally being, get this. <laughs> all that being said, because because um, sometimes I know I'll, I'll say this first. Sometimes when we do the retrospects, they have like a different kind of format. I think this one will just kind of check check it off in category almost or by character or by different situations, just because I think to go by story, the story is very straightforward. It's very much the princess is captured. Mario Brothers going to this other world to save her, and it's all the kind of like sm like small details to the world and everything around it that makes this thing stand out mm. compared to other versions of Mario. The very first version, which is which we covered on on this podcast, we went to the Super Mario Brothers archive and we downloaded the script to the very the very first script. 
in there was obvious changes because there wasn't a whole lot to move off of, but it was surprisingly very accurate, way more accurate than you expect anything else at that time. Exactly. More like, accurate than movies made today about other properties. Yeah, it, it was like Mario Brothers as fuck, and that script was amazing. If you want to like listen to it, we have that fucking podcast, whatever number it might be. I don't know it off the top of my head, but just we did that on one of them if you never listened to it before. And um, yeah, it's just so cool to go through that whole thing and go, what the serious fuck? Like, talk about like being dialed in. Because once again, it's that weird thing where like, you know that everybody kind of put those things together. It's just kind of like, hey, uh, Bob, you want to do a fucking video game script? What the fuck's a video game? You know, like that Pac-Man shit and so on. Ah, <laughs> those things got fucking stories and stuff. Yeah, how about that? Ah, uh, fucking ha take a look at it. Hash it out. You know, uh, I'll see you uh, next Tuesday. We'll figure it out from fucking there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Who's going to see it? Kids, they're fucking stupid. Don't watch anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess we can sell shit to kids. You know, I don't have a fucking soul. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then they, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so it's just like, then you see it and you're like, shit, they get the fucking little details. That, that means it's like, they, they must have really, really like went deep in depth into this thing and like, you know, you know, got into Mario fucking brothers and so on. Yeah, because there's even like a part where, all right, what? There's a part where he has a tanuki tail and ears. Luigi does. Yeah, he grabs There's a fucking a feather. <laughs> feather, and he has the cape, I think, for a minute. There's another part where, you know, they actually fight monsters from the games. Koopa Troopas are like... Piranha plants. <laughs> yeah, no, the Koopa Troopas are in it, and they're basically lizard soldiers in armor that represents kind of a shell in some way. So... And it kind of has the the Mario. People complain about that script because Mario's such an asshole in that. But I, that's why I kind of like that script. He's just such an because there wasn't a whole lot of versions to go off him at that time. So I guess the idea he's just this angry, like hard drinking plumber. He's like, "What the fuck's happened in my life? I had dreams and I hit sitting here watching my idiot brother, you know." And, <laughs> and then they make Luigi at like Luigi's almost kind of special ed, like he's but kind of Rain Manish at the same time. But he has own, he's always optimistic and has these weird, unique skills in some way. But there's some things he does that are a little, like, kind of rain, like, just, like, you would get frustrated with Luigi at times because you get it. Because, like, they just get a few coins. Like, okay, we're off. And they pass by some homeless guy. Right off the bat, Luigi gives the homeless guy the coins. So it's like, dude, what the fuck? It was, we, we like, just Luigi, the, the fucking rent is due next week. You can't just be giving away all our fucking coins. Yeah. Oh, he looked hungry. Yeah, what? Yeah. So, um, that's where this movie started off, this fantasy comedy adventure movie, and then it just went through script hell, and went through a bunch of different revisions. Now, the other revisions are on, the, a bunch of the other revisions are on the Super Mario Brothers movie archive website, but we never actually kind of got over them, but I, uh, kind of heard, I skimmed, I've, I've skimmed some of them, and I've kind of listened to podcasts that cover the other one. Uh, there's actually this other podcast, it's actually written by, it's actually, um, hosted by the two guys who wrote the sonic movie um i don't remember their names but i think it's called best movies never made and they had like a two or three part one on the mario brothers movie where they're covering the different versions of the scripts and all that and uh they just cover mostly movies like you know sometimes we do unproduced scripts more or less mm -hmm. anyway um so there are other versions and it starts to basically kind of eventually evolve into this thing that we get which is it started off like, okay, so we're going to take that same story from the other one, but it's going to be a little bit more sci-fi-ish. They're going to be in this more weirder alternate version of Brooklyn. Like, Brooklyn is kind of in ruin. It's kind of covered in moss. There's more weirder organic technology. It's going to be a little different. And then from there, it kind of devolves into this quasi-satirical, like, dystopian future thing. And that's... Eventually, they kind of ex more of the drama, and we get the movie we get. But out of that, there's still some weird little charm about it, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, granted, you, you know, it's like, we all know, like, when you when you write a script, you can make any kind of movie. You can make, you know, a billion-dollar movie, and, it's you know, you ain't paying any fucking bills and so on. You just write what you want. You just write magic. So I, I know mm -hmm. that kind of, like, once, you know, it kind of gets the hands of me, like, okay, what can we realistically fucking do now? And, uh, and it's like, well, it's like, yeah, you read those other scripts and they are fucking sick and so on like that. And sometimes it is that thing where it's just like, oh, my God, this is fucking, like, amazing. I would love to have seen this. But, you know, at the same time, I'm like, dude, the Mario Bros. movie we do have at the end of the day, 
is still tons of fun. I still love the hell out of it. I think Bob Hoskins mm-hmm. really is about as dialed in as an actor you can get to play Mario. I know they want all kinds of other people to play him, but like, I don't think any of those ones, you know, it's like he wanted like Danny DeVito, not close enough to Mario. They wanted like Tom Hanks, well, that's a fucking weird choice. You know, all these things like that. I think Bob Hoskins is 100% like, that to me will always be fucking Mario. Yeah, yeah. And even the things they do with this movie, because sometimes you'll you hear people who just watch the movie for the first time and they'll be like, wait, why did you do this? Why did they do that? Why? You know, it's one of those things. Well, first off, this movie came in 93, I think. Was it 93? Yeah, it was 93, like a month before Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, it was in 93. And a lot of these things we know as Mar- of, of Mario weren't really part of the lexicon or weren't part of the, the, the uh, story yet, really. But like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Daisy is Luigi's girlfriend. Why is Daisy like Princess Peach in this movie? What the fuck? Is it by that point, and I could honestly see this being the case, like they're like, yeah, you know, um, every other game, she's called Princess Toadstool. This game for the Game Boy, she's called Daisy. Uh, but it's the same lady, basically, right? Just different color, just fucking thrown in there, you know. And then eventually Daisy became, you know, more prominent in the games as they went on, you know? Well, you can almost even say that the Daisy aspect in the video games all stems from this movie. I mean, I know she's in the game, but, like, the whole Luigi, Daisy, like, how they kind of, you know, paired them up and so on. Mm -hmm. Like, that might not have happened without the actual movie, when you really think about it. That could have just been... I mean, Luigi probably would have got somebody at some point and been like, No, Luigi, you fucking stay at home. I'm banging six (laughs) broads tonight. I don't need my fucking retarded brother showing up. You sit in the hallway. That's your place. What? With the crack addict that lives underneath the stairs. Snuggle with him for warmth. And make some fucking change, cause rent's due tomorrow. You know what to do. Don't forget your chapstick. <laughs> he just flicks him a dime. <laughs> That's all I have to spare. That's all you can buy with that. Cause you know what? Cranky Kong's showing up tomorrow. And he ain't gonna be happy fucking Kong, let me tell you that shit. Yeah, I know it's fucking weird that, you know, I'm fucking rented from the guy that I fucking stole his child or stole him and had his child come after. <laughs> but it's business. Yeah, it's he, New York real estate. What are you going to do? He fucking gets it. I get it. We're from the old world. <laughs> you know, his son, you know, well, I love the big galook and all, but, you know, not the, the same fucking bastard. person. He's always off on a country adventure and so on. Fucking weird shit like that. <laughs> I think he's gonna be on that show Hoarders where they collect all this shit. Have you seen how many bananas that fuck eats? Yeah. I, I, shit, I even paid fucking King Koopa, or not Koopa, fucking uh, King K rule to go steal those bananas from him once just as a fucking practical joke. <laughs> Ended up and murdered his whole family, but it was still funny. <laughs> I was laughing at least. <laughs> hey, shit, that first time that Donkey Kong went down there and looked at his nose, his bananas were there, and he fucking cried himself. It was worth it, right? It was fucking worth it, you know? That was all the coins I collected from Mario 3, but it was fucking worth it. I'd do it again, too. <laughs> Luigi, what the fuck are you still doing standing here? <laughs> Wait, when you stand there, I can't get fucking hard. <laughs> And don't give me that floppy dildo thing you did in Super Smash Bros. That's fucking weird. <laughs> what thing you do? Oh, the thing where he just goes, like, stands up straight, just falls over. <laughs> well, there's that, too. I always think of, like, the rocket attack that he has in, like, Smash Bros. Melee and on. It just looks like the floppy dildo shot. <laughs> he just stands there and just goes straight. Like, no wonder you haven't got laid yet, Luigi. <laughs> Your whole body looks like a fucking dick. So, <laughs> Bob Hoskins is the perfect Mario, and John Leguizamo. He's perfect. maybe not the first. He's not the first choice, but when you see him, like, no, it makes sense. At this point in time, I get what they did because they, they they didn't really have personalities for him yet, other than the show. And Luigi, by this point in the cartoon, which they probably didn't even pull from, he I don't know if he was the cowardly brother. He was just kind of like Green Mario, really, by this point in the show. Yeah, I, God, it's a good question. It's been so long since I watched the little animated ones and so on. But um, at the end of the day, though, like, I still think John Leguizamo, I mean, my entire life, 
When I see John Leguizamo, I know this is not what he wants, but when I see him in anything else, it's like, dude, it's fucking Luigi. You know what I mean? And collateral damage, dude, it's Luigi and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Fucking, that's amazing. I was watching, uh, my girlfriend and I, we were watching uh, Waco, and he plays the ATF agent who uh, is spying on the cult. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, shit, Luigi. She's like, what? Oh, oh yeah, Mario, but yeah, Luigi. <laughs> see, that's what I see. If I would have saw that, I would have thought the exact same thing. I've never not thought of John Leguizamo. He, he will always be Luigi. And, and I know that he doesn't like that, but he should fucking... He should be like the Green Ranger and just fucking live it. You know what I mean? Because that's like, what the, like the Green Ranger could have been one of those guys who's like, yeah, that was something I did when I was younger and so on. But no, no. Instead, the Green fucking Ranger's like, yeah, I'm the Green fucking Ranger. Suck it. <laughs> yeah. That's what he says when he walks into a, a conference room at a Comic Con. I could fuck any woman in this room. You know why? Green fucking Ranger. Tommy, look at my fucking hair. <laughs> you see these gold shoulder pads? <laughs> they say leave that shit fucking on <laughs> they're like can you do the thing where like your head fucking spins like the action figure <laughs> so glad you asked <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got that fucking surgery just has two heads that rotate out of his chest <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing I'll say this about that the way I remember those figures maybe I'm wrong and we'll get back to Mario in just a second because I had one of those figures I think it was the Black Ranger um, when you you flipped it like it would be the 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 hero like it would fl- be like I think go from the Ranger head to the regular to their head without the helmet yeah when you did that it wouldn't flip back you'd have to like just push it back like oh sorry we gotta slowly push this one back wouldn't it just be a <laughs> like that it's just like oh okay one second just give me yeah so i always feel like that was false advertisement but yeah you know that was one of those ones where they're like fuck it just won't why can't we just sit here and just fucking flip 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 and they're just like you know what just okay it's a cool enough feature as it is you know what Kid, kids gonna learn early on that not everything is perfect this is a yeah. start <laughs> we're gonna show what that's as far as it gets in the ad we'll stop there I mean, it's not the biggest deal you gotta just flip it back but it just was one of those things like oh we gotta the bad guys the someone's walking room i can't see my secret identity and just slowly just push their own head back into their chest as the thing comes back up <laughs> but yeah yeah back back to mario i know this is all around the same time period because here's the thing if you're somebody that fucking loved the mario brothers movie you most likely love fucking tommy and the power rangers of that time period too more than likely, yeah. And um, the thing about the movie that's most interesting is, I guess it's... it's People talk about this movie as if, oh, it has nothing at all to do with the game. Nothing, nothing at all. And I can say, we talked about Final Fantasy a few weeks ago, the movie, Spirits Within. And if you told me that had nothing to do with the game, I'm like, it has about... 90% of that movie has nothing to do with the game. 90% of it. But this movie actually does have to do with the game. It's just more looking at it through, like, like a, a dystopian lens, which people don't associate with Mario. But at that point in time, I guess, like, well, how do we do this? Because if you think back, and I don't know if they did their research or if it's coincidental, but the first Mario game, uh, the well, first Super Mario Brothers game, the whole thing is, well, Bowser laid the whole Mushroom Kingdom over brick. The reason why there's bricks everywhere is because Bowser did that that's why they have that aesthetic and also it's probably easier graphics that way but that was their excuse story-wise so in this you could say well this was a nice kingdom but bowser came and fucked it all up it has this whole you know new york in the 80s kind of vibe to it there's crackheads running around everywhere and where's the dinosaur thing come from why the fuck is there dinosaur shit in this like oh well at the time most popular game was super mario world which is has a dinosaur theme to it so that's that part comes from yeah, you literally start off on fucking Dinosaur Island. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I think it's that, and then, like, um, it's almost like the little elements it has, like, throughout it, there really is tons of, I feel, kind of, like, nods. And just kind of stacking on, I guess, you know, you know, in a sense, like, a kind of a, a bare-bones story of what kind of Mario was, and then just sort of adding these elements to it, kind of using, like, okay, well, you know, that kind of Blade Runner, like... That Mad Max kind of like world, kind of the darker edge from even like the 1989 Batman and Ninja Turtles and so on. That's kind of popular. We're going to kind of go with that theme, you know, add that to Mario Brothers. And it's almost, this is a good way to sort of look at it. You know, like the Elseworld stories of like Batman and the DC crew? 
that's sort of kind of what Super Mario Brothers the movie is. It's like an Elseworlds story, you know what I mean? It's like Gotham by Gaslight or something like that. Yeah, like, I was thinking, like, let's say that if the Illumination movie was not happening now, and they were going to try and make another live-action Mario Brothers movie. Not, um... Not, not like a sequel to this, but just a new Mario Brothers movie. What would they do? Well, they'd probably make it... They'd probably try and give it kind of a Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy type of vibe. Like that kind of humor, more than likely. Because mm -hmm. they'd probably hope to build it to a Smash Brothers movie, probably. And then, on top of that, it would probably... I guess you kind of could pull from like a dystopian world. You could pull from that, and it could have more of like... What comes to mind is something like... Guillermo del Toro, fantasy, steampunky, kind of, that, that's how I imagine they would do it. Now, that's not me trying to rewrite a whole movie here, but if you were to do that today, like make a live-action Mario Brothers movie, I imagine you do something to that effect. Um, back in the early 90s, dystopian, you know, Blade Runner, uh, even though that was the 80s, but still, like Blade Runner and kind of like um, uh, Judge Dredd, that stuff mm -hmm. was kind of popping up and being really popular right then. So it makes sense that they would pull from that for this. Like, all right, well, kind of, I mean, you know, there's the, the Mushroom Kingdom itself at that time already seemed kind of very unruly. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's that, and that's like, and then you sprinkle that Steven Spielberg kind of magic over the top because it also sort of has that feel, like that adventure, even the, you know, the soundtrack even has that kind of almost like John Williams kind of feel like, you know, like the do 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 I think that's Alan Silvestri. I might be wrong. Because he's like the other Steven Spielberg. He did like Forrest Gump. He did a lot of the Marvel movies. Like he did Endgame. He did Ready Player One. Basically, if... I'm not saying this to be a dick, because I like him probably just as much as John Williams. Maybe even more, but... If if John if you can't get a hold of John Williams, you get a hold of Alan Sil Silvestri essentially. Yeah, well, that's always got to do. John, John Williams was just the guy. He, he's just got the namesake. He, you know what I mean? Well, he did Mario Brothers. He did not Mario. Brothers. He did. Uh, he did. Um. He did Star Wars. He did Superman. He did Harry Potter. He did Indiana Jones. He had a bunch right there. And Alan Silvestri still did a lot, but he doesn't have like that big brand. Those big couple of brand names, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have the George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, like, those huge Thai, like, films. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's just, like, that, the whole, like, kind of thing about, like, I think that's the other thing, too, is this movie, like, you kind of almost kind of forget, like, how big of a budget it was. It wasn't just, like, you know, because, you know, video game movies kind of nowadays kind of get knocked off to, like, being kind of, like, B-movies and so on. You know, I mean, like, you know, they, they try every once in a while, you know, you have ones, like, you'd have, like, a Tomb Raider that was kind of big, or you have something, like, like, Prince of Persia was another one where they're like, let's throw some fucking money into this. You know, not, not like it went the distance, but like that. But you look at Mario Bros., like, every time I kind of watch it, you kind of go, like, that is, like, a fucking, like, very, like, futuristic movie. I mean, they got CG in there, like, at a time when, like, there was barely any CG, and they got all kinds of these effects that were, like, almost, like, first times. And you even just look at, like, things like Yoshi and so on. Like, he is really well put together. I mean, it doesn't look like Yoshi if, you know, if you come from, like, the video game world and you just come into this, you're like, what? The, that's different. It's fucking, like, Yoshi's, like, a, you know, looks like something out of, like, Total Recall. They're like, have your own pet raptor to carry around with you. You know, the kids fucking love it, and it's not dangerous, too. Well, watch out, he might eat the cat, but hey, nobody likes that thing anyways. That probably would have been a joke if they actually managed to get something. I could see them, if they ever got a sequel and Yoshi was in their house, like, someone's like, where's my cat? You just see, like, you know, just like the tail going down or whatever. No, um... Shit, he was gonna eat that lady almost, if he just fucking... What if he just ate that lady and just, like, stood up and went, and just, like, shit out a fucking egg? <laughs> What if it was just like, just like very painful and just like, it didn't have the cute little dinosaur noises, it was like, <laughs> and it, the rest of the movie on. played and it would cut back every once in a while to fucking Yoshi, like hands on the fucking wall, like, <laughs> like he's like, oh, there's the birth canal. Ah! Like, the legs popped up. <laughs> Back to fucking Mario and, like, the fucking Brooklyn babes, like, going down the fucking pipe and everything, like, with that Joe Satriani song playing, like that, and the hard cut to Yoshi. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's why he was out of commission for a while in the movie. <laughs> the thing is, that's you, sh you get to that part, and then, like, you, you take it to, like, the... Motion Picture Association of America or the rating boards and they're watching that like 
we don't know how to go about this because we frankly don't know what the fuck is going on. Is it trying to take a shit? Is it giving birth? It's a dinosaur, so I don't really know what if that's a vag, if a cloaca, or what is it? What's going on here? I'm confused. So, like, they just it just throw the movie out there with like, we don't know. I don't know. It's it is it necessary? Well, it's unrated. We can't make up our minds. This dinosaur scene. It's unrated and it's an over three hour long cut. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there so much footage of this fucking dinosaur? <laughs> They're like, well, we spent a lot. We, we spent half a million dollars on fucking making oh. it. So we. Annabelle and Rocky, they really had, they really had a vision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but still, at the end of the day, that fucking Yoshi thing's fucking sick. I want one of those in my house at some point. I, uh, yeah, there is, um, what else is there? The Goombas were an interesting choice. I heard people complaining about the Goombas. Like, well, I get what you're trying to do. They're, what else could you do? You could have just, it makes a lot more sense I wouldn't give them a tiny head and just like these tiny ass body i don't know that, that would have been hard to pull either way it's kind of damned if you do damned if you don't even if you look at their heads they look kind of if apparently they're not goombas in mario world even though i thought they were for the longest time but there's something else but the the things they have in mario world that essentially replace the goombas they look kind of like those sort of yeah they kind of have that look and they really like if you look at the head itself it does kind of remind me like yeah it looks kind of like a goomba and then you got the other ones that are like the koopa troopa ones i mean they never really call them that exactly but i feel like that the reason they don't is that might have been kind of confusing to like the parents that are probably already confused you throw that on top of it be like that's that's what yeah it's a fucking koopa troopa give the fucking program duh god if they just serve fucking beer here and make everything better there did seem to be sort of like, did you do you think there's kind of like a hierarchy between like the Koopa Troopas and the Goombas? Because you saw a lot more of the Goombas, but you only saw a few of the Koopa Trooper ones. I think so. I feel like which one do you think is the hierarchy? I mean, like realistically, in a Mario I game, I think the Koopa we know Troopas it's the... are Koopa Troopas are the hierarchy on that one. They're like not. They're not. They're like they're not your. Um, they're not yeah, like. They're not necessarily Emperor's Red Guard, but they're something maybe the next step below that. Yeah, so, something in that kind of order. So they still so. get punched in the face and all fall down like dominoes, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, that just kind of happens, I guess, when small head, big body. Um, so this whole movie, something that was actually kind of cut out of the... out of It was very prominent in the first draft, and I seemed through the other ones, but something, I guess, Annabelle, uh, Jankel, and Rocky Morton were trying to really put in here was the was this whole thing where it really emphasized on Mario and Luigi's relationship. And in this movie, they already kind of get along. It's already kind of like, we we see eye to eye, we get it, they might talk shit to each other, <laughs> and that's about it, but it's not really, they're not, there's no real conflict between them. And I'm okay with that, even though I liked their whole dynamic in the other version, the first version, I still think that the fact that they don't have all this brotherly tension between them works, but there's still enough there for them to talk a little bit of shit to each other. Like, I kind of like how something they get across from Mario, like Mario from the get-go is very competent. Like, even though plumbing is, is his life and Luigi's just kind of going through the motions, there's a lot of little small things you're able to say. Uh, there's like, there's the very blatantly obvious ones where Mario's like, treat your pipe, treat your tools like your friends and they'll never let you down. There's that stuff where it's a little forced, but then there's the stuff where it's just like, they're running through like an, they're running through like a hallway or something. And then Luigi says, like, it's this way. No, it's not that way. What do you mean? That's the echo. How do you know? I've been listening to Pipes my whole life. And they just keep moving on. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like those just little, like, moments like that. And I do kind of think that it is kind of nice that it doesn't have... Sometimes the tension in movies can be kind of annoying. Like, I'll, I'll use this for an example. Like, you got those movies where it's, like, best buddy movies. And this is something that drives me up the fucking wall. Because it's in so many of them. At some point, about three-fourths of the movie or so, they're going to have that point where they're like, Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I'm going my own way. I, I cannot fucking stand that in movies when I see that. Where they get to that point where they're just like, yeah. And then they finally fucking make up and like the long one. be like, it's okay, man. I'm sorry. Like, uh, you know, bros before hoes. Or like, you know, uh, maybe we should have chose that direction. And, you know, or, you know, maybe the bean burrito idea wasn't so bad after all. But, like, I fucking, like, I don't know what it is. When I would see that, like, I mean, even as a fucking kid, like, after you see it in about, like, two or three movies, and then you start seeing it in a bunch more, you're like, I fucking hate that part in movies where, like, all of a sudden, the best friends for fucking life, something splits them up, you know? And I'm so glad this Mario Brothers movie doesn't have that. Maybe that's why I like it so much more than other things. 
Sorry, the audio went out there for a second. But yeah, you're saying that essentially that that whole like brotherly conflict thing in movies can get kind of old. And I think depending on the movie and what's going on and everything else in it, it can kind of go, I can feel the same way, but it varies from case to case. The The Mario one, since that's what it was all about, the, the first version of the script, I was fine with it. But I, I don't think that the, the fact that it's not here doesn't really ruin the movie because by this point it's a totally different movie the only thing that really has in common other than a few character names is the um like first like five minutes of the movie where, where uh, daisy's being dropped off well, instead of a child it's an egg in this case um, yeah well it's like what's well, like I, I think it's like was well, was i think that's almost what makes this movie better is by not having like just it doesn't have that point in a movie like that so many and like you know '90s movies are really bad about, it, but it goes into 2000s. It goes into I mean even movies to this day and age where you just have like the best friends and at some point they gotta break up. I'm so glad this movie doesn't have that, and then you just gotta kind of wait for them to get back together because it's just one of those things like yeah, it probably it works fine in like Dumb and Dumber in like '93 or '94. Shit, that's like the same time as this. But like past that point, like I just felt like the more I saw that movies, I'm like this is fucking stupid. It's like just don't. It's like putting shitty fucking kids in movies. It's like a few things I just don't need to see. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. Um, something else that was interesting about this movie is Dennis Hopper is Bowser, or in this Koopa, because people, people, there's another thing. People are like, all right, he's Bowser, but they keep on calling him Koopa. That's the name of the, of the turtles you kill. Like, no, 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 no. Back in the day, he was Koopa. It wasn't until Mario World till he was called Bowser. So that was another one of those things people would always complain about. And but, was he um, even called Bowser in Mario World? He was in the cartoon by that point. Maybe he was in the cartoon. I want to say by Bowser, he was maybe starting to be called that. I think he was Bowser in mario world when you i think he was i might be wrong on that but yeah yeah because i almost want to say that he the the name bowser wasn't not saying it wasn't said before this but it wasn't prominent till mario 64 like mario 64 is where it's like he's 100 percent always called bowser but before that it was almost like ah, oh, he's bowser but he's also you know kind of king koopa and so on i know in mario I rpg he's called bowser but they also refer to him a lot of times as king koopa too i want to say um in his overworld in um, Super Mario World, when you finally get to his castle and his whole... Actually, thinking back, because when you get to his uh, over his uh, overworld in um, Super Mario World, it actually kind of, thinking back, because there's a lot of neon lights and shit, I think that kind of sort of resembles Dino Hatton. That might be coincidental, but let me see here. Because I want to say it said Bowser over that. I just got to see that overworld. Yeah, maybe, maybe it does in that one. Just like, as I said, that might have been the one where they started using both the names. I'm not too sure, but. Let's see. Yeah. Anyway, well, there's something I thought they did a good job with him was the fact that he was this. Uh, something they do with Bowser is he's very dangerous, but he is in, he's he's like very kind of goofy. He always kind of fucks up. Now. This now Koopa, he's not so much like Goofy as in like, oh, drat, they tricked me again. But he's a lot more of like just this fumbling. He's kind of he's just kind of like so prideful. He's almost seems kind of like I, I feel like if this movie came out today, they'd make it so many comparisons to him and Trump. Yeah, well, I even saw something where it's like, oh, his hair is kind of like a Trump haircut because you know it's you know Trump technically hasn't changed in forty fucking years. <laughs> So, I mean, like, a Trump joke of, like, 1985 isn't really too much different. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But, no, the whole thing with him is, I just think even, he still has all his Dennis Hopper-isms at the same time, though. It's not out of character for being, you know, Bowser, really. You know, and that's that's another one of those ones where, just like, you know, many of the other characters in this, like, as a kid, like, when you, that, that was my pretty much first experience of fucking Dennis Hopper. So no matter what, whenever I see any other movie, I mean, like, I kind of still have that, like, you know, you see fucking Easy Rider, you're like, fuck, it's Bowser fucking, like, you know, cruising the fucking road, you know, with Peter Fonda. Fucking A, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just him on, like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm looking, I, f I found a picture of his overworld in um, Super Mario World, and yeah, there is, his his castle does have a neon sign that says Bowser. Okay, so that, yeah, that might have been right where it was at. So it's always kind of confusing because it's like it's like almost like Bowser and like you know Princess Toadstool like the or I guess it was like King Koopa and Princess Toadstool and then it turned into like Bowser and Peach but that like kind of sort of shifted as like Super Nintendo into like N sixty four kind of happened. Yeah, and I think by 
I think by the time you get to Mario World and Mario um, Mario uh, RPG, that's where it starts to kind of have stay more strict with its own rules and kind of set up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of shifts on over, and it feels like it 100% sort of solidifies in Mario 64. Like, that's almost like the common era starts right then. Because she's like, Princess Toadstool, Peach. Like, Peach. Well, what the fuck? She has a first name? Yeah. She has a first name? Yeah. So. <laughs> Shit, we've been, fuck- we've, been, we've been fucking for 20 fucking years, and now she finally tells me she's got another name? I ain't changing nothing. It sounds sexier, but I don't care. I, mean, I came around a toadstool. You know, my, my father fucking raised me up right. It'd be all formal and shit, so. <laughs> We're sticking with toadstool. I ain't fucking calling it Peach. <laughs> what am I, a 1920s fucking gangster? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Luigi, don't you dare be fucking putting her name in the phone book as Peach. <laughs> so help me, Christ. <laughs> One of those things, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't give a fuck how many toes you show up in my house. <laughs> we, get, we, just, we just have yellow toad, blue toad, red toad, green toad. <laughs> you know, shit, I, I, I don't fucking, like, learn their names. They're not real people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after after I save them, every time I go to a castle, it's not... Princess Peach is sorry, she's another castle. Like, oh, well, you know, I didn't come here for nothing. I just ripped their heads off and save them for later. <laughs> I need to use that mushroom for something, you know? Ah, shit, you know. You never know when you're gonna run into some stupid fucking trap. Next thing you know, you're the size of a fucking squirrel running around. I don't know how it works. Physics <laughs> in this world is fucked up. Yeah, you know what I mean, chef? My father didn't have enough money to send me to fucking school and shit, you know what I mean? I had to learn things the hard way, just like he was. You know what I mean? I started out as a carpenter. Then I became a plumber. And I learned that was a trade you stick with. As a carpenter, I realized I hated monkeys. (laughs) Yeah, and it's not a racist (laughs) thing, too. I really hate when people bring it up that way. (laughs) (laughs) It's just, hey, if if you grew up and there was a fucking monkey throwing barrels at you, you'd be pretty fucking pissed, too. (laughs) Did you ever see the, um... I watched the I watched one or two of them because I was just curious because I was like, all right, this this was a thing apparently. The Mario Brothers animated cartoon um, that was basically a fusion of Super Mario Brothers one, Super Mario Brothers two. That one was not the first Mario cartoon. There was a Donkey Kong cartoon, and oh, yeah. it, it was on the Saturday Saturday Cade or whatever, where basically it was just. They took a bunch of different random properties and just had these little five minute shorts. Like this one's a Frogger one. Apparently, he's a he's a newspaper writer for the Swamp or whatever, you know. And then like there's then there's like you know there's like a I guess a Pac Man one. There's a bunch of different random ones. There's a Donkey Kong one. And there's always Donkey Kong just running around acting all like just advent just just a just a uh, what's the word I'm looking for like mischievous scamp like and Mario and uh, Pauline like oh god damn it Donkey Kong you fucking get back here that's almost kind of like how Mario stalked he was just like more high pitched like almost like a very stressed out Shaggy from Scooby Doo like god damn it Scoob <laughs> no I know I I definitely do remember watching those ones you know and that was just that weird type of they're like oh these arcade games are fucking popular I guess we'll make little cartoons based off of them and that's like your grand grandfather fucking make it that's even weirder than like you yeah. know what i mean that's like an even older generation coming in you know be like i fought in fucking world war ii and now i'm drawing fucking monkey shenanigans <laughs> now i'm drawing some bullshit made by the fucking <laughs> japanese <laughs> <laughs> i thought when we dropped a fucking nuclear bomb on them that was the end no more <laughs> japanese ever I didn't realize it only took out two fucking cities. I had to shake hands with some guy who said he made... He's like, you want to meet the guy who made Mario today? I'm like, all right, great. So I walk in. Who the fuck is sitting at that table? <laughs> I thought it was going to be an Italian guy. You know what I mean? From the old land. From the fucking... No! It's a fucking guy. He looks like he's in the Beatles, but if the Beatles were fucking Japanese. <laughs> That's when I... That's when I like jumped over and my boss took chug, pushed the guy like Gary. There's one behind you. <laughs> you know, From that day, reflexes I was fired. kicked in. You know, next thing you know, I was climbing up the fucking hills, stacking bodies up. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Next thing you know, um, they shoot me with tranquilizer dice, and I wake up, and I'm fucking animating a fucking ape. <laughs> and they say, this is the only way that I don't go to jail. <laughs> For what I just did to Shigeru. What the fuck cares me a moto? So, he says, draw him fat. That's why I draw him so tall, lanky, and slender. <laughs> No, um, so it's kind of interesting going back and seeing these early versions of these characters before they're really, before he was like, Mario, you know, what, what we all associate as him now, you know? Yeah, exactly. And almost you can even say in the movie that the, the girlfriend that Mario has, like, I think that one's really supposed to be always based off Pauline, but without, they obviously don't use her name like that, but they call her uh, Daniela or whatever. But um, I always think that's supposed to be kind of like Pauline, and they almost probably just, it's like that weird thing where they probably looked at her like, well, Mario sort of, I guess, has an original girlfriend. I guess Luigi can have the fucking new one. You know, we don't need just Mario this like, you know, on a mattress, like fucking banging six girls going down a pipe. <laughs> he just gets like, he, I just like that idea. Like Mario, like Luigi and Luigi and Daisy are getting by. Like, oh my God, we got to get out of here. They'll send Mario just comes out of this tube with six ladies on a mattress. Like, oh, sorry. I was a little held up. Got caught in the pipe business, if you know what I mean. That song, though, right there, that that Joe Satriani song, that da na 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 na, that song right there, I kind of just always whenever people, it's kind of like one of those other things when people say Joe Satriani, <laughs> since this is my first, this was my first uh, like exposure to him, it's always Mario Brothers, like. Oh, not one of the greatest rock, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Just, oh, Mario Brothers. Shit, that pipe scene where Mario's fucking banging six chicks going down. <laughs> that was an earlier cut. <laughs> exactly. Shit, he was fucking banging a Goomba at the same time, too. He's like, you get your fucking ass over here. They don't call it an orgy for nothing. What stays <laughs> in the pipe is what leaves the pipe. We're not on Earth anymore. We're out of God's eye. <laughs> yeah. God can't see through pipes. It's, it's it's like how Superman can't see, you know, through fucking, um... It's it's lead. Lead, lead, fuck shit. I was forgetting that for a second. It's fucking late. Fuck you. Inside baseball secret here. All confession boots are lined with lead. Yeah, you know what I mean? We, we don't know if, like, you know, Superman's Catholic or not, but it's best to not take the chance. <laughs> <laughs> no. All I know, he's fucking, you know, from the same planet as Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, I saw that commercial, too. Uh, it started to make sense. <laughs> was that an old Super Bowl commercial? I don't remember. I can't remember. There was those ones I remember, like, when we were kids, where it was, like, Jerry Seinfeld's ha fucking hanging out with Superman. You know? Yeah. And, and they're, they're almost, like, sort of, like, mini episodes of Seinfeld. <laughs> they're basically extensions. And, like, Superman's just some dumb, like, bumbling oaf. Yeah, and Jerry Seinfeld's, like, fucking teaching him the ways. And so, he's so fucking and he's weird. It's like Jerry Seinfeld's, like, fucking, like, teaching Superman how to get fucking laid. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember he was voiced by, he was voiced by, um, uh, guy who does Brock Samson Adventure Brothers. Um, uh, D, um, fuck. He was also Dickie in Seinfeld, so that's probably how they met in the first place. Yeah, I Was I, it Dickie in Seinfeld? Was it Dickie in Seinfeld? Was that his name, Dickie in Seinfeld? There was like he was like the guy who would, who would like, um, Elaine would hook up with every so often. Oh, I, I you know I didn't know if that's the same guy as Barack Sampson. I did not know that. Was his name Dicky or was it something else? Ah, I wish I could say Show I remember exactly, something? but I don't know. Escapes. Anyway, Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> yeah, Mar Mario Brothers movie. You know, shit. Just... Fuck, where we leave off at Pauline fucking something pipe? Yeah, she does look like Pauline. I, I could very easily see her being Pauline. And um, maybe that's another thing that's coincidental. Just like how the Scapellis, uh, one of them gets transfer, trans, uh, transformed into a uh, into a chimpanzee. So maybe that's like a reference to Donkey Kong. Because it's at a construction site. But I think there's a lot of things that are kind of coincidental. And there's some other things that I think, well, maybe. Maybe they did do a little bit of paying attention. Because... Uh, the people who made, who directed this one, they didn't like the original script, but I guess they liked the brotherly friendship, the brotherly drama of it, and they're agitated that the studio cut a lot of that stuff out. And moving forward from there, that's where 
they were trying to make this other movie and they were changing things on the day of shooting and a lot of the actors are like, what the fuck? I thought we were shooting this over here. So that's where, you know, we at some point I like to read the original scripts or the scripts before this one, before they, you know, what they were looking to make. Yeah, no, I always think that'd be kind of fun to go through some more of these scripts on here and just kind of see exactly, like, you know, some other different, like, middle ground kind of versions and whatnot. And it is kind of weird how, like, I don't know, to me that uh, it always seems like the oddest thing when they have those kind of movies where, like, the script is fucking changing daily. Like, it's a fucking script. Like, what, you can't get it fucking solidified? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, I think of, like, other movies, too. Like, Alien 3 was like that fucking similar time period. Must have been, like, an early 90s thing to be like, we can't get these fucking scripts, like, together in time. Well, this was more of like, um, it wasn't like they couldn't agree on it and they kept them just changing it back and forth, back and forth. This was more of like, um, or like too many uh, producers leaning in. This was the directors literally going against what the producers wanted. And they had this thing and they had to try and make a coherent movie out of it when they were, they were done. So that's why there's some things in this movie that are just like, because if you notice, there's the part when they first go to the de-evolution chamber. And they turn Toad into a Goomba. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, it looks like there's diarrhea shit out of nowhere all over the ground. <laughs> that always just looks like fucking Toad just stood up and just <laughs> shit himself <laughs> once he got off the chair. Um, <laughs> what happened originally, and I, the, Mario, the Super Mario Brothers movie archive pointed it out. Somebody, um, like, the, like the, uh, somebody, somebody in the room sneezed. And then Koopa turns and looks at him. He's like, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. Devolve him. And like, what? No, no. And he just basically devolves him. And when he comes out of the thing, he just turns into slime and splatters everywhere. Because when I first saw it, like, what is that? Where the fuck did like this runny <laughs> shit come from? Like, oh, that was a person at one point. That's what it was. Or there's other things. Like, I don't think it needed this. But when they go to that bar and they're playing catch with the with the rot with the um meteorite piece mm -hmm. apparently another version of that was the uh spike and iggy going on top of like the stage started rapping basically saying why they don't need koopa <laughs> just going fucking marky mark and the funky bunch who's also in the soundtrack <laughs> yeah and I, I could i could actually see that like everybody watching that and collectively be going like you know what i know this movie's a bit much but this is just too much as it is so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop right there well, because that was the thing that's like, you kind of forget, that was that time frame where they like fucking threw rap in like everything. You know what I mean? They're like, shit, we'll fucking throw a rap at the end of Ghostbusters 2. You know, we'll put like in fucking uh, Ninja Turtles 2, we'll have Vanilla Ice show up and so on. And I, it's like, I think in some things it works. And then in some things it's like, oh, okay, not, you know what? No, no, no. Like that, that, that's like a joke that made, I think like the thing about those rap jokes is I feel like that made like old people laugh. But I think every like young person sort of cringed at that. Well, there's even the do the Bartman for the Simpsons. And there is actually, uh, have you ever seen the show Bojack Horseman? No, I never have. He's, uh, he's basically a old washed up nineties sitcom actor. And at some point he goes to some dance with a friend, with a, with a friend's daughter or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he says like, these kids don't know how to party. I'll show them how to party. And then like, they're all gathering around and he starts doing this lame ass do the Bojack, like, 90s, like, hip, like, cheesy-ass hip-hop song, you know, like, not, not like, real hip-hop, but, like, that, you know, shit you'd see in movies or television shows that, you know, and they'd be like, oh, what is this? This is stupid! Knock it off! Oh, like, oh sorry, it was cooler in 92. And just walked out. <laughs> yeah, that that sort of thing. So, like, I can kind of see why you take the Iggy and Spike thing out, like, that, that kind of makes sense. I mean, one of these days, I know because there is that, like, there is quite a bit of footage that was been deleted out of this movie, so it's sitting God knows where, you know. But it is one of those ones, I would love to see that super fucking special edition Blu-ray, like, make it fucking, you know, extended just for no fucking reason at all, but just because you have the footage. You know, what one of those kind of things. And I know, like, even at the Super Mario Brothers, like, archive, they're, like, they're, 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 they're putting together some special edition Blu-ray for us Americans, because... Fucking UK gets all the nice shit, but uh, yeah. The, the, but this, I'm wondering if we will reach that point where this movie's like, here is the ultimate director's cut and all that, and with director audio commentaries. This many years later. Well, it's like in the UK they don't have something. It's like super special edition, but there's a there's a steel limited edition box set, and it looks fucking sick. But it's like you know, if you're lucky, you can get the thing for about fifty bucks used. <laughs> 
Oh, fuck. And the worst part, too, is it's like, well, since it's a British one, it's not going to play on your American DVD player. So it's almost like, because I'd say, like, I would literally, I would pay 50 bucks for a Blu-ray just because the DVD is kind of a shitty copy anyways. It's like literally that, like, uh, we copied over the Laserdisc one, I guess. And here you go. Is it format for widescreen? No, fuck that. That's not like work. We're not doing that. <laughs> You know, so you kind of, like, the DVD copy, you kind of forget. Like, it was one of those ones where, like, when that DVD first came out and you only had a 22-inch, like, you know, 4 by 3 TV, it was fucking fantastic. But now it's kind of like, you watch it again, and you're like, oh, it's, God, it's in that same category as, like, True Lies, where it's just like, damn it, I want the fucking super good version of it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're, we're just saying, what's Super Mario Brothers in? What category is it in right now? Well, right now it's in the True Lies category. So that actually makes it feel like it was just, like, really raised up a bunch. <laughs> Um, we actually didn't, uh, stop and talk about Samantha Manthas as Daisy. Uh-huh. I think, uh, I mean, she does just kind of play a little bit of the damsel in distress for the most part of the movie, which is kind of a, at that point, that's all Peach really had to go off of, or I guess Daisy in this case. But at the same time, I think that it kind of, because people kind of, I heard people say like, she just looks like she's lost. Like someone just shoved her. I heard someone say, so it looks like someone just shoved her into a room and she didn't know where she was. I'm like... I think it's kind of fitting for the character. I think for this movie, that really works. And that's not me trying to, like, you know, like, give her a backhanded compliment or anything. I think almost that was intentional, the way she was playing it. Like, um, I'm in a, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm a dinosaur? What? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that sort of kind of is. And I think she still is a real strong character. Anyways, I mean, shit, she's running her own fucking, like, dig site. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's literally the person in charge there. And so on. And I think it is kind of that thing. All of a sudden, you're thrusted in this world that you realize that, like, oh, shit, I came from here. And I'm fucking was born a dinosaur. You know, like, those nuns fucking covered that egg shit up. They, you know what I mean? Like, those nuns probably were like, shit, this is the spawn of fucking Satan. I guess we got to raise it right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we leave the part out, the original cut, where there is no princess because, like, the docks times have upon us. These bring a knife down and then just cut to, like, like to, like, 20 years later. Like, oh, well, have you heard about that kid that got stabbed 20 years ago? What? Oh, that's fucking, that's sad. Yeah, I know. Anyway, they said they just born an egg. Oh, that's impossible, Luigi. Who'd believe some bullshit like that? People aren't born from eggs. <laughs> yeah, stop doing the fucking drugs you find on the street, Luigi. <laughs> I know we ran out of cable a while ago, but this is not a suitable replacement. <laughs> but this guy was once like, you think about it, you like, what do Christians fear? The fucking snake. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. where, what do snakes have? Eggs! When somebody drops a fucking egg baby on your fucking doorstep, what do you think it fucking is? <laughs> it's the spot of the serpent. <laughs> I don't think... Or it's like a jackal or some shit, like an omen. Yeah, yeah it's just one of those ones, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like, probably not the safest place to drop a fucking baby off. I know mo mostly anywhere else you could, but if they're in an egg, it's, uh, maybe a fire station might be a better place. Yeah, I, I was gonna say fire station. It'll, uh, may like, you, at least they were some open-minded <laughs> Sorry, a fire you station know? be like, shit, we're having fucking omelets tonight! <laughs> be oh. like, I right, got Look at somebody dropped the fucking egg off in the baby dispensary. <laughs> So, uh, let's see here. Um, when you were a kid, were you just kind of like, uh, just random question, when there was just like Iggy and Spike were the uh, henchmen, did you, as a kid, were you kind of like, oh, fuck, why was it Iggy and Spike? It could have been anybody else, but I think for this movie, for the times, I think it just worked, you know? They're just like, all right, we need the two goofy, bumbling henchmen, but Spike, the guy played, uh, played by Richard Edison, he does have this weird thing where when he's in mid-thought, He's like, ah, ah, sir, sir, ah, ah, ah. Like, <laughs> he's just trying to move, connect to the next sentence. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Well, Excuse yeah. me, cousin. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, they're, they're just a classic bumbling guys. And I think it's like, the, I really feel they almost just kind of chose those names. They're like, well, those names sound kind of weird and kind of hip and unique. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think that was sort of it. They probably just looked at the fucking Bowser children and just been like, yeah, okay. It almost be interesting just fucking Dennis Hopper just had the fucking all these kids. He's just... <laughs> Like fucking run, run I like to you to meet my brood. This is Ludwig, Iggy, Dizzy, uh, I don't remember all the fucking names. Cutie Pie, hi! Yeah, exactly. And Bowser Jr., who I keep close by my side. Who's the good one? <laughs> yeah, though he doesn't deserve his own fucking castle yet, because he fucking spilled milk 
on the fucking new carpet. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> yes, you're not getting your own castle. This, Yet, the, you, the, <laughs> go ahead, sorry. Yeah, you go pout in the fucking corner. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, you know, Bowser has a lot of fucking kids. Where they all come from, who the fuck knows either. Just saying. Well, this particular version of Bowser, I mean, he'd probably have to, like, coat himself in Purell or Lysol before he even hugs one of his kids. Uh, th th this Bowser is, like, he's actually a futuristic character, almost, when you think about it. He's like, oh, this is, like, what people are like nowadays. <laughs> in this corona age, definitely, yeah. Yeah, you go around, you just see all these people who are like, you just almost want to, like, be like, death. You don't know about death. Come on. Take the fucking mask off, fucking pussy. Like, shit. <laughs> Well, even this right here, <laughs> like even even this right here, though, I'll say um, going back to this Bowser for a second, and this actually leads back to the um, to Iggy and Spike. Mm -hmm. It kind of gets across that like he's ruthless and he's relentless, but he's probably in our world more than likely if he didn't have this rock, he wouldn't be the world's biggest threat probably because it was already a world with like fledgling resources and already a kind of a crumbling economy it looks like you know because they're just what they're on this they're just on this desert world with what with one little city where they're able to survive in yeah exactly and maybe fucking princess stone still is like dead maybe he wasn't maybe maybe he just wasn't the greatest fucking leader just saying you know what i mean like maybe mm -hmm. he was a nice guy but uh maybe he was a little bit of a pushover and so on and things just you know, people sort of, I think, in hindsight, 20 years later, they go, well, fucking after having, you know, Koopa, like, we just want fucking Mr. Toadstool back again. But uh, maybe he wasn't as good as people remember him. Maybe they go, maybe when she, maybe when at the end of the movie, when she comes back, you're not going to believe what happens when she comes back. Like, all My like, dad's right, like, fucking in charge again. He's an asshole. <laughs> He's fucking, yeah, it's just like the ones, the ones where it's just like, it goes the exact opposite way. From being this, like, very scary, roofless tower where it's just like, shit, you can just get fucking mugged in the street by an old lady to being like, yeah, he's fucking giving out money that we don't fucking have, and he's borrowing it from fucking China! <laughs> <laughs> you know Mar that's when Mario grabs his belt. Grab your belt, kid, we're going in. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm ready for fucking anything. No, even like, um, thinking back, because this movie obviously leaves itself on the cliffhanger of a sequel. Now, I can honestly see, this is just me, just, I can think of places it can go from here, even at this time. But, um, just thinking studio execs at this time. Like, alright, even if we were to do a sequel, what the fuck are we gonna do? We killed off the one bad guy that's in all these video games. Like, well, there's actually the frog guy, same thing, you know. <laughs> I honestly, you you could probably, because, you know, it seems like a, one complaint I heard people say is, well, it's all on this desert world, Mario's not a desert world, and that's, you know, true, but I think if you wanted, if, if, if this thing ever did go on to do a sequel, which it never did, you could do the thing like, all right, well, they're hopping worlds, this is just the desert world, this is like dry, dry land from, like, Mario 3, we haven't even seen the more greener areas over here we haven't seen the snow world over here you know yeah you could almost even do the thing where it's like okay you thought there was just two dimensions well guess what there's like fucking nine dimensions or something you know you could go that kind of far mm -hmm. yeah and just made so, it have that actual world hopping and so on and yeah it's, it's fucking mario brothers there's a lot of places you can go there's a lot of weird crazy shit yeah so you know we go to this world where everything's a play for some reason what yeah i don't know yeah, there's, yeah there, there's some weird ones. Or we're gonna go to the snow snow world, and all of a sudden there's fucking lava levels all over the place, and I don't can't figure that fucking out. Yeah, we're gonna go to the southern world where all suddenly paper. What? Yeah, yeah, don't question it. Just keep going. Just, just real, just go full Mario. You know what I mean? That's really what I I, I would love to see that though. Is I I just want to see a movie that's treated very, very serious, but it's full Mario. Like. Nobody fucking questions any other thing. It just does exactly what the games do, but it's treating so serious. Don't give it that stupid, like, like oh, we, we kind of joke about it, or that's fucking... No, no, no. No, treat it just 100% as is. <laughs> like, Mario is just, like, sitting, like, out in the wood cabin, just, like, chopping wood, and then, like, a Black Hawk helicopter comes down, like, Mario, we need you. Like, I don't go by that name anymore. <laughs> It's your brother. He's stuck in a mansion. What? <laughs> a ghost has him. But Hold first on. You gotta go Let to me this... get my fucking tools. 
first we gotta go to first we gotta go to this paper world. Why's that? You need an ability to turn into a paper airplane to fly in unnoticed. Like, I'm on it. Boo's got security up the yin yang. <laughs> Just trying to imagine like the super intense like Tom Clancy level intense Mario movie, but it's still just as cartoony as can be. I, I love the idea of like fucking Splinter Cell being combined with like <laughs> Mario Brothers. And that's like one of those things you never really thought about, but I'm like, I almost kind of love that. Like the fucking the threat of the world is like in your fucking hands, Mario. <laughs> or then like even when he gets home like you know the next like the the third movie or whatever ends with him like opens up with him like in a vet and you see yoshi like you know buckle down rah, rah, going rabid like shh 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 he's like smoothing he's like petting his nose they're like it's okay it's okay and, like injecting him with euthanasia it's like <laughs> he pulls out like a fucking like super scope you're like i don't want to fucking do it but it's the only fucking way yoshi Yoshi, you, I ate the you, 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 you yeah. devoured the neighbor's kid. <laughs> no one can fucking know. No one can fucking know. <laughs> I'm gonna make an omelet in the morning out of his fucking egg that you shit out. <laughs> you gotta do your part, Yoshi. There ain't, yeah. there ain't no fucking dinosaur island in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens when we die. We just go to the ground. Bam! <laughs> just charges up like... Whoop! Yeah! It's that fucking noise. <laughs> Mario's out on his front porch just fucking bawling. Like, Luigi's just like, Mario, what's going on? <sighs> Luigi had to put Yoshi down. But no, Mario, you can't put the... You, you can't put the Luigi... He's put over! He's already buried in the back. He's just gonna move <laughs> on. He's just this voice is with Mario's. This wouldn't have happened if you forgot. If you didn't forget to close the fucking door behind you. You left a fucking gate. He's a wild fucking dinosaur. <laughs> if I ride him, I got a control of him. You know, I pull on his fucking ears and shit. But it, <laughs> but when he's left to his own demise, he just fucking runs like an idiot. <laughs> you ever try to fucking catch him? It's fucking hard as fuck. Sometimes he runs off the fucking edge. I'm not going. He after just keeps him. on running like a fucking lemming. <laughs> I put him down, Luigi. It's just the easiest thing. You know what? I'll get you a new cape tomorrow. We'll make up for it all. I know how you like him. <laughs> a new cape? <laughs> yeah. You know, one of those one, one of those nice ones that makes you fly and shit. I know you're scared of heights, so you just like to pose in front of the mirror with it. You're like, you're my <laughs> you know, fucking brother. I don't even know you anymore, Luigi. I should have made you put him down. Like, oh, Mario, you've had a lot to drink. You shut the fuck up. You should have been the one to put him down. You're the one that got him killed, Luigi. <laughs> Sorry, it's fucking slapping him in front. Don't you give me that look, fucking Toad. Don't you fucking look at me. You'll be fucking next. He's doing this in front of, like, fucking Daisy. And Daisy just, like... It's, like, later, like, Daisy is, like, sitting on, like... In, like, Luigi's room. It's a, it's just a mattress that's on the ground. No, like, no bed <laughs> no frame or nothing. She, no fucking sheet either. <laughs> yeah. So he's all, like... <coughs> she's, like, Luigi, you shouldn't let your brother talk to you like that. But he's my brother. <coughs> he takes care of me. He's like... I mean, just, Luigi, you should... You need to learn to defend you for yourself. Like, but he's, 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 my, no, Luigi, he's using you. Be a fucking man and stick up to your brother. You know, <laughs> he's the only man I know. By the end of the movie, Daisy's fucking Mario. <laughs> While Luigi fucking watches. <laughs> like through a hole in the wall. <laughs> Mario looks back. He knows he's watching. He looks back. He's like, yeah, yeah. Back <laughs> at the hole. <laughs> back in the fucking hole. I know it's a fucking studio apartment, but you fucking get back to your place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I kind of wanted that movie now. <laughs> There's so, so this many is ways intense, you like, early... I think that's like, what just David, makes like, just like, like, David... Like, you know, David Fincher movie that, just like, about... 
there's really throughout time there's never been tons of like i guess like we, we just have like this you know personality of who mario and sort of luigi is and it's like you sort of take that and just run with it pretty much covers it for what we can say for this for the mario movie yeah it's just one of those ones like it's just that movie that like i don't care how many fucking times i watch this movie till the day i fucking die it's just such a good film and i think it's that thing that like you had to have been there I think that's all ultimately at the end of the day. I'm not saying that you can't love this movie if you watched it for the very first time in the 2020s. But, um, because, you know, there's always going to be that kid out there who's been like, you know, who's who can appreciate, I guess you would say, retro stuff and old time things. Or maybe watches it and goes like, oh my fucking God, where has this movie been my whole life? You know what I mean? Because, you know, I Mm -hmm. think about that for ourselves. Like, how many times has there been like a fucking 60s or 70s movie or something like that that you fucking find at one point and you're just like, where has this been? You know what I mean? Like, this is this is so made for me. I didn't even know this existed until, you know, I was already kind of older, you know? Yeah, definitely. This is... You never know. I think people who... I'm going to say it's going to take an open mind. If you didn't grow up with this movie, it's probably going to take an open mind to enjoy it. At the same time, though, I think if you're interested in Mario history, if you're interested in mo- video game movie history... I mean, this is the first one, so what else can you go off of? I mean, the first official movie based on a game, the way, way to say it. So, I think that uh, even though this movie has some clunky dialogue in, in parts, and even though there's a few continuity, there's like some odd continuity errors just from like scenes cut and all that, and I, I'll be honest, I do like the original script more, but that being said, who knows if the movie would have been as good, because there's the script you write, it's easier to write a good script than it is to direct a full-on movie and have it come out being good. So who knows what that would have been. But regardless, this is still a fun movie, and whenever I watch it, I just can't help be happy. Yeah, you know what I mean? It just takes me back to those good old days, and no matter what, you can always relive it, and I I don't care what anybody says. Like, it's one of those movies to me. It's fun. The whole way through, it's exciting. I'm never bored. I'm always entertained. To me, it's got tons of Mario aspects in it for, like, kind of being, like, the first one out. Shit, there's video game movies that come, like, six movies later that, like, have, like, so much little to do with, like, the game's, like, source material than, like, this one does. So, you know, and just the fact that, I said, it's like an Elseworlds story. It's something different. It's, like, you know, got its own unique thing in I, I can never say enough good things about the Mario Brothers movie. You know what I mean? They, they, you know what I mean? There might not be enough people out there to defend the crown. We know they exist. If you look on it, fucking Amazon, you'll see all those five-star reviews. All people that, like, are up there that saying, you know what, Mario Brothers fucking is, like, the greatest movie ever. I don't care what anybody says. And, you know, for those people like ourselves, it's just that amazing experience. So, you know, if you've never seen it before, or if you haven't seen it in a long time, go back and watch it. Go back and watch it with an open mind. Clear your thoughts. You know, think of like what Master Splinter would tell you in your training and uh, <laughs> then go and enjoy it because Stop eating so much fucking pizza. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> yeah, he is exactly how that is. But sometimes sounds weird. The older I get, I look to Master Splinter's wisdom more and more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know what I mean? To make another funny. Yes. No. Um, so this whole month since, well, first off, this is episode 450. Yeah, 415. Since this will be coming close to either the end of April or early May, we're going to treat all of May as a Mario themed uh, month. Mario May. Mario May. So this is going to be all very, um, and not like super obvious things from Mario Brothers, like things from, you know, some, some like, I I think, I think most, I'm going to say most of the stuff we're doing is kind of deep cuts, weird stuff. Yeah, I think the choices we have, we'll almost keep them a secret because I think they're kind of cool that way. But mm-hmm. we got a lot of just like, almost like weird-ass Mario things that you would, like, not a normal person would kind of go after at least. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, shit, the yeah. only, there's only one I can think of that maybe is a... It's not even really like the most popular Mario thing, but it still is maybe like the closest thing compared to like the other things we chose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's some that we got from fucking left field that are like way out there. You know what I mean? Shit, you're about mm-hmm. close to home run and so on, but... uh but yeah, Mario May, that's what we're going to have. We're going we're, we're gonna to go back in time with all kinds of great stuff. And uh, we start off with 450 and with the Mario Brothers movie. Because that movie, it, I feel like it solidifies. Like if, When I think of things, it solidifies me and everybody I know like as our friends kind of group. I know people around us want to fucking have these arguments and so on, but that's what I always say. When it comes down to like the Pizza Boys, every fucking Pizza Boys fucking loves the Mario Brothers movie. 
Very true, very true, yeah. I was thinking, like, does Kyle like... Yeah, Kyle likes it, yeah. Yeah, but beyond all that good, fun Mario stuff, go to oldmanorange.com. But more comics, more podcasts, Pizza Boys, animations, old, you know, old videos, music, all that fun stuff we got on there. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again, we're out of here.